Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the uh, re-released K100 uh, kit, in, but in the new Aerodyne form in 125 scale. It's a Revell kit uh, listed as number 85-2514. The truck was made famous in pop, pop culture as uh, the Red and White Semi from the 80s TV show BJ and the Bear. Now, there seems to be a little bit of confusion as Ravel has uh, released this, calling it a new release, but I believe that uh, corresponds to the new Aerodyne uh, parts and um, the decals that they've supplied with the kit. Now, it's a skill level 5 kit with 284 parts molded in white, clear, and chrome uh, with vinyl tires at a pretty nice price point. The uh, water slide decals have generic yellow stripes and business items too. It looks like they've done some work cleaning up the molds here and making it nicer but um, there's still a little bit of flash that you'll have to deal with. Now the chrome is um, uh, a little bit dull. It actually could be better and overall though it, this looks like a, uh, a reboxed uh, version of the Aerodyne K100. Now the fit and finish is you know is, is so so you're going to need to do a lot of cleanup and some test fitting and the overall dimensions when done are about ten and a half inches long about uh, four and a quarter inches wide and six and a quarter inches high here are the contents of this kit and I'm gonna call this an open box review because I opened the box and there were all the parts now a lot of people will pick up each one and try and describe it but that won't help you build the kit and that's what we're going to do. Now remember uh, we'll be using probably Model Master liquid cement for most of the construction but sometimes super glue for strength and white or crystal clear glue for some of the transparent parts. Also take heed to all of the manufacturers safety and use guidelines when using any of the products that you see or hear used in the review. Now here you can see the decals that were supplied with the kit and those are the ones uh, on the uh, top side here and they're they're nice decals um, but they're set up for a business type of uh, semi truck so I decided to go out to the aftermarket and find some uh, decals that correspond to the uh, BJ and the Bears TV show promotion and so I'll be using those for this review however um, there's nothing wrong with the kits decals and if you want to make a uh, a long hauler out of it there's no problem uh, fitting those you just have to find something that matches the yellow um, uh, stripes very well. You may also want to consider um, buying some of the aftermarket setting solution for the decals as uh, they can be larger for these types of models and can use some coaxing to settle down and conform to the contours. I've started the build with the chassis so let's build the frame assembly by adding the cross members and assembling the frame halves. Then assemble the suspension parts to the frame and paint that the color of your frame choice. The air ride bags are rubber colored uh, like a blackish gray. Next we'll assemble the motor block, transmission tail and top, the motor front and the valve cover, the water manifold, oil filter and paint that motor color uh, and the transmission color. And then um, is a sort of an aluminum or reddish uh, like the uh, like the frame and uh, the exhaust manifold is steel and the fuel filter aluminum as well as all of the turbo uh, piping there. The lower radiator hose is black and the belts are rubber color with uh, semi-gloss black pulleys. Now assemble all of the parts when the paints dry. Once again don't forget to test fit everything that you're putting together before you glue it. And also, you're going to need to remove paint and chrome from any of the areas you want to join together for a good bond. Now it's time to install the motor with the power steering reservoir. So I painted that silver. Assemble the fan and paint it flat black with a red blade and add the chrome top. Then the hose is flat black and aluminum with the clamps and installed into the frame with the hose on the motor and the lower hose in place. So find these parts in the kit to assemble the rear and mid differentials. So assemble the brakes that go with each one and paint the differentials brakes and drive shafts frame color. Now test fit the suspension because installing the differentials was uh, a little tricky and to save uh, an issue sand the opening of the suspension prior 
to painting and assembly that opens things up for better receivers. Then install the rear differential with the small drive shaft, the mid differential and the front drive shaft and the brakes in that order. Here you can see the assembly as um, you know for detail and I painted the shocks uh, black and the torque rods and mounts uh, frame color as is the torsion bar. Now add the torque bar mounts, torque bar and torsion bar and then install the shocks into place as you see. Find these parts to assemble the front suspension then the spindles are then assembled to move so that you only glue the backs onto the axle pin and the tie rod locks not the tie rod itself. Then assemble and add the brakes and paint the unit frame color. The shift linkage is black with the gearbox frame color also. The fuel tank support is installed and its uh, frame color and the shocks are black as is the steering box and linkage. These parts are used to assemble the battery box and paint those frame color with the tank and the step added and install them onto the frame. Now we'll get these parts out to install the front tires. And I installed the hub in the rear rim and glued the front rim to the rear rim and let that cure. And then I slid the tire over the rim into place. And to give the tires a road look, you know, I, I pressed and rolled the tread area on a sheet of fine sandpaper, about a 220 grit on a flat surface. And then glue the hub onto the axle pin. Gather up the parts for the rear tires and they're assembled a little bit differently. Paint the centers and the rear hubs flat black and slide a tire over a rear rim and then glue the center into place. Slide a tire over the front rim and glue that to the center. Now add the hub to the rear rim and the square parts inserted into the axle ends on the differentials. Get these parts out of the kit to assemble the tanks and we're going to paint the air tank and install inside the mounts and then the fuel tanks are assembled and note the uh, yellow arrow and that that both tanks need the center areas kind of uh, sanded away on the tanks for the tanks to mount into place. So the tank support bar is in the way and it's always been a design issue with this kit. So at this point the directions um, leave the chassis but I continue on with it so we're going to deviate from the instructions to finish this subassembly. So get these parts out of the kit. Those are your stacks and uh, there's some tanks, an inlet pipe, etc. And paint the air filter tank uh, frame color with a flat black mud flap and install that. There are some chrome rings on it too. And the air tank, air inlet, stack mounts and supports are frame color. Now I wash the stacks with a 50-50 wash of uh, flat black and thinner to bring out the details on them. And it just kind of nestles into the crevices and it's a, you're able to see the highlighted parts better. Assemble the stack mounts and the air inlet air tank supports onto the frame now. Locate all of the uh, exhaust tubing that you see here. This will be assembled and painted. And I used uh, aluminum and some flat black and installed it into place uh, making sure that it fits tightly and properly and is aligned or, or the cab won't fit into its position later. So pay some attention to uh, how this uh, appears. As you can see, your model is coming along well at this point, And we now have what we call rolling chassis upon which to build the rest of the kit. Now we get these parts out and begin working on the interior. It's painted the color of your choice. Now the floor is flat black and the seat springs are flat black as are the pedals. Paint the seats, the center hump, walls, bed, TV, however you see fit. And there's some decals for the TV and one wall unit. Now assemble the seats and install those. And add the wall to the interior with the bed. The TV shelf and the TV are added to the wall uh, in the corner wall then is assembled. Now we can gather up the parts for the cab and we'll assemble that and prime it. So go ahead and assemble the headlight panels. And then note the holes on the roof and if you're not using the optional spoiler you can fill those in with some putty and add the visor to the roof. Now double check all of the parts for fit uh, and remove any mold lines and seams that are in the way and make sure that uh, you sand the parts so that uh, all fit flush together. Now carefully uh, give it a light sanding uh, so you don't remove details from the surface uh, and just add a little uh, surface adhesion for the paint. 
once you've rinsed off your parts after um, cleaning them up and let them air dry, you can give the uh, inside and outside a nice coat of primer uh, to make for a base for the color coat. I'll be doing a two-tone paint job on my truck and the first color is white so uh, I gave it a base coat with some light mist coats and then some uh, wet coats until I had good full coverage on the entire body. So I taped off the body uh, to emulate the uh, BJ and the Bears version of the model and um, once I'd done that I painted the uh, parts red that were still exposed and uh, it's a medium red and they're not perfect uh, as far as lines go and tapes go but that's okay because there are decals that uh, you use to cover up the edge and some of them parts are hidden but as you can see uh, it's turned out nice and uh, rich so there will be good coloration. Speaking of decals we'll be uh, putting those on as soon as the paint is dry and uh, as you can see Billy Joe's moniker here on the side door um, and I strongly suggest you use some warm water, plenty of warm water let the decal soak about 30 seconds and then uh, set them aside for about a minute before you try to place them into position. But also use plenty of warm water or the decal setting solution on the body to make sure that you can slide it around into place. And then once that's done, let the decal dry overnight and you can give the uh, body a clear coat to seal those part uh, decals into position. Now we can gather these parts to install the rear interior wall the side walls and then the floor. And once it's all in place, we'll add the rear grill and the back support. And note that the floor will sit inside the tabs in the body as seen by the arrows. And then the walls should be flush to the top for a good fit. Take your time and test fit everything before you glue the parts together. Next, uh, grab these uh, brackets and, and hinge caps out. Uh, these are the hinges and we're going to install those uh, onto the body. Um, so they go on to the floor of the cab. Uh, make sure that you scrape any uh, paint or glue to make sure that this is a good, uh, a good solid joint here though. Next, uh, install the windshields into place using some white glue or some crystal clear glue uh, made for windows and transparent parts. And then uh, we're going to have uh, uh, add a 50-50 uh, wash again to the grill to bring out the highlights there and then uh, install the wipers and the grab handles and then the headlights and the surrounds are also put into place. Get these parts out of the kit and the decals that you see there and we're going to paint the dash interior color and note you can use either decals or inserts um, that need to be painted or the front panels there uh, there for the uh, interior color and uh, the column and the pedal, uh, th those are flat black as well as the steering wheel. And install the panels, add the pedal and the steering column, and then install the dash and add the wheel into place in the cab. Find these uh, parts from the kit box and the uh, doors that have been painted. And note there has always been an issue on this uh, kit. Um, the hinges are just too big. So they have to kind of be reworked uh, to function properly. And the review doesn't get into scratch building hinges, so I just chose the uh, uh, to cut the hinge part from the panels and glue the doors into place. And then that gives you a good uh, appearance, uh, but the doors won't function then. That would take reworking those hinges. Now paint and add the door panel, and you just uh, you just have to decide that uh, that's the way it has to be unless you want to do some extensive repair. Now add the step bars into place too. Now grab the uh, these parts and you're going to paint the, uh, the the bed whatever color blankets and sheets you want. Uh, and the antenna base uh, is frame color. Then install the plate and the antenna base and install the cab onto the hinges and add the bed to the interior roof and then install the bumper. So. Um, Grab these parts out of the kit now and we're going to assemble the fifth wheel and the plate and paint that uh, frame color and install it into place. And then the fenders are uh, installed into place. Remember to test fit and scrape any chrome before you glue. And then paint the mud flaps and add the weights and install those to the bumper and paint the tail lights with some clear red. Now add the bumper and the grab handles to the stacks. 
Now the roof and the final chrome pieces are installed so paint the console and uh, the roof is installed then and then add the glass and uh, with some clear or white glue and paint the marker lights with clear yellow then install those and the horns as well as the grab bars. Now on the cab add the turn signals and add uh, and paint those clear yellow as well and add the mirrors and the spotlight. There were just a few pieces left over from the build mostly of course the uh, decals that I didn't use because I went with an aftermarket set uh, but there's also some custom spoke rims and uh, unused dash panels and a spoiler uh, as well. Well there you have it. This model uh, will make you take your time and test your patience but if you do you're going to get a really nice looking model to put on your shelf there. Now Ravel hasn't really updated the truck and the molds um, so there's going to be some flash and mold lines and fit issues that you're going to have to deal with and of course there's a couple of inherent flaws that just seem to need to be reworked but overall it makes a great looking truck and in themselves uh, the big rigs are, are always challenging kits just because of the sheer number of parts and the amount of detail painting that you need to do but I still recommend this uh, it'll give you a challenge and uh, who can resist you know replicating some of those cheesy TV show vehicles uh, that we used to watch so if I were you I'd put the pedal down and I'd put one on my shelf. Oh we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel but you can find us on Facebook and our website right on replicas.com. Thanks.